that we allow an image or a picture to be created on the inside of us. We're using our imagination all the time. Did you know that? You're using it all the time. Let me give you one more. What we hear will only change us to the degree that it gives birth to new vision or a picture in our heart. You know you'll forget what you hear, but you'll retain what you see. You'll forget, that you, you, I'm not saying you w automatically will, but you have a higher uh, probability of forgetting what you hear, but you will not forget what you see. This is why when the preacher, what did he preach on Sunday? I don't remember. Because it didn't create an image. Now, I'm not blaming anybody, the preacher or the people. That's not the point. It's not about blaming. But we need to start seeing things on the inside. The reason we struggle with receiving healing is because we don't see ourselves healed on the inside. Right. We see, we're identifying with a picture that we have, a mental picture on the inside. And God wants us to change that picture. I've entitled this message, Dissolving Doubt. Let me, let me um, doubt is an issue of the heart. You know that. Right. Doubt is an issue of the heart. In fact, the Bible says, and I won't go there. The Bible says in Romans 10.10, for with the heart you believe into righteousness. Notice it's not with the head. Somebody got that? <laughs> we got one amen. Praise God. It's the heart that you believe. The inner man. What is your heart? It's your entire inner man. It's your spirit, the part of you that's born again, and your soul. It includes your mind, your will, and your emotions. But it's with the heart you believe into righteousness, and then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let's start with Mark in your outline. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Most of you know this. And we've talked about it, but I'm going to say something here. Dissolving doubt. You know you can have doubt and faith going on at the same time? Most of us do. But once again, we really need to change the way we see ourselves on the inside. Do I see myself in Christ, or do I see myself in Chris? I recently did a post that when I think of myself, I lament. I'm bummed. <laughs> and I fret. But when I think of Jesus, I rejoice. And that's what it is. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. This isn't about the earthen vessel. This is about who resides in the earthen vessel. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You know, it doesn't honor God when I identify with my failures. Thank you. It doesn't honor God when I look at, oh man, I'm so sorry. You are sorry, so am I. We all are. None of us deserve His blessing, but He deserved it for us. It's called the love of God. But I need to start identifying with, as Jesus is right now, so am I in this world. Amen. That's how God wants me to see myself. In Him, not in me. I don't deny that in myself there's no, no good thing in my own strength. There isn't. But I'm not in myself. I'm in Christ. He's in me. Amen. I'm no longer in the flesh is what it says. So then they that are in the flesh, they cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Romans 8, 8 and verse 9. I'm not, that's my position. I'm in Christ. But see, the reason we struggle is we don't see ourselves. We don't spend time closing our eyes and using our God-given imagination and saying, what would it look like if this was true in my life? Well, how would I feel if things were going... Listen, you can go places on the inside before you ever go there on the outside. That's what worry is. Worry's meditating on all the negative outcome of everything. And you see yourself going there. And then sometimes you do because that's where your faith is at. Look at this, for verily, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, Jesus speaking, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, somebody say say, say. unto this mountain, your problem, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Three says, one doubt in your heart. Now listen, here's what I'm after. When it talks about not doubt in your heart, the Greek uh, voice of the verb is passive. What does passive voice mean? The subject, you and I, receives doubt. I can choose to reject doubt. Now, here's my next question. How do I do that? I start using my God-given imagination to see myself by choice in the promise, not the problem on the inside. That's a choice. Doubt comes at us. How does doubt come at us? All this evidence we have on the outside. Yeah, that's yeah, in your family. That's it. I mean, that's all coming at you. You've heard all those words. See, words create pictures. 
And pictures create beliefs. And beliefs are spoken out of your mouth. That's why what we hear is so important. But if you just hear something, I love what Barry Bennett said, words without pictures are stillborn. That's why you don't die when you say you're dying to have a piece of cake. But if you start seeing yourself in that problem instead of that promise, you're, that's what belief is. With the heart you believe into righteousness, then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh, I want to say this again. We live at the level of what we allow to create an image or a picture on the inside. I want to go there, but I'm going to say it because I want to read the context that I don't hear anybody do. But in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, the end of the verse says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. But I can't wait to go there because I've never heard anybody. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's talking about a stingy man, a miser. And he says, eat and drink, he says, with you, but his heart's not with you. Because as he thinks in the heart, that's how he really is. But that's how it is for all of us. What's going on in my heart? That's what I really believe. Yeah, let me give you an example. You all know, I'm, this will be so easy. Ready? I'm going to say something and you respond. God is good. Do you really believe that in your heart? Do you really believe that he's good to you? Forget about everybody else for now. All the time? Seriously, if you really believe that, why in the world would we have fear? See, perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 14, the verse before that says, As he is, so are we in this world. Once you realize that, that's the perfect love that casts out fear. If God's for me, who can be against me? That's what I'm supposed to say. But do I see that? Do you ever just sit there and meditate? God hung the moon for you, for me. If you'd have been the only one, Jesus would have died for you. We hear that stuff, but what's our heart saying? What we hear will only change us to the degree that it gives birth to new vision. What you hear will only change you to the degree that it changes what you're seeing on the inside. Isaiah 26. We've been here, but you need to see it. You need to see it. Watch this. 20, verse 3. Thou shalt keep him in shalom, shalom. Peace, peace. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace. Shalom, shalom in Hebrew. Whose mind... Yes, star in the Hebrew, and it means imagination. It's translated that almost every other place. Mind, imagination. Whose mind is stayed upon him because he trusts in him. Now watch this. What does it mean to trust God? Have your imagination stayed on him. Oh, somebody hear that. How many times have we heard, well, Rich, just trust God. And Rich is walking away thinking, okay, what does that mean? Is anybody like me that wants to know what it looks like in real life? That's how I am. Just trust God. And we, we speak a little bit of Christianese. And you know, you know what Christianese is, right? Saying the words and not knowing what they mean, right kind of thing. We speak a little bit of Christianese and we say, just trust God. What is it, trust God? What are you seeing in your heart? Do you see yourself sick? Are you changing what you're seeing on the inside? Or are you allowing people to paint pictures? You watch a TV show and, oh, and Hippator and Zippator and Ripator and Hypator and, and possible uh, side effects. Tim Hawkins, the Christian comedian, has a funny video. And he talks about, man, my arm's feeling great, but all the side effects. <laughs> the side effects will kill you. But see, those are creating images and pictures. Do you look in the mirror and say, He renews my youth. By the stripes of Jesus, I walk in divine health. Jesus paid the price. I'm not broke. Do you talk to your checkbook? Do you say no in the name of Jesus? I am blessed whether it looks like it or not. And it's not just material. I do have a great marriage. I am blessed in my marriage. My wife loves me. I realize my wife is getting better looking all the time. I'm telling you, she, I'm finding out she's a woman of God. I was wondering for a long time. <laughs> No, I'm serious. It impresses me to see your growth. It impresses me. But I'm telling you, you go God's way. Here's what people don't understand. We didn't get in this mess overnight. We're not going to get out of it overnight. But what it'll start, if we'll start changing the way we're seeing on the inside, we will eventually change what we see on the outside. Right. Glory to God. <laughs> You're, oh, look at this. Look, at your, look uh, down on page one. Your heart is a vision factory, and without pictures, words are still born. Your heart is a vision factory. You're constantly seeing on the inside. Okay, 
So anybody got anything on at home? A roaster or something? Or are you planning on a restaurant? I guarantee you when this message goes on and on and on, <laughs> you're going to start seeing hothead burritos. <laughs> or wherever you go. Right? Because all of a sudden you start seeing it on the inside. God gave you your imagination. Isaiah 26.3 again. Watch this. Trusting is him is keeping your imagination stayed upon him. Do you know your imagination forms or fashions your world? God will keep him in perfect peace. Shalom, shalom in Hebrew. Whose mind, imagination is stayed on him because he trusts in thee. That's what it means to trust in him. Look at the next verse. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. God wants us to see on the inside. And I ask you what, are you, what are you seeing daily on the inside? Do you see yourself defeated or do you see yourself victorious? Do you see the favor of God on you? Do you see people liking you or do you see them rejecting you? I fought with rejection. I, I have. I go and I think, but I said, no. And I, this last conference, I fight, no. People like me. And guess what? People like me. They do. But I got to see it on the inside. I'm so used to being... Uh, just from a small town in Ohio. Just a little dinky town. Not much of anything. Well, I don't know. You might want to tell the Lord that because he moved into this earthen vessel. It's not about the earthen vessel. It's about who's in the earthen vessel. And it's the same with you. We limit God in our imagination. We don't limit him anywhere else. What we do and say on the outside is a result of what we're seeing on the inside. And as long as we see, a, see limit itself, we'll limit the limitless God on the inside. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise God forevermore. Watch this point. A key to dissolving doubt is to allow the promise to paint a picture in your heart. Promise goes in the blank. Allow the promise to paint a picture in your heart. Both the Hebrew of the Old Testament, the Hebrew language, and the Greek language of the New Testament contain pictures. God is into us seeing pictures. Behold the lilies. Behold the fowls of the air. The kingdom of God's like a seed. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Genesis chapter 15, watch this, verses 1 through 6. Genesis chapter 15. Watch this. This is Abram before his name changed to Abraham. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. Now what sense does that involve? You've got physical vision with your eyes, and you've got internal vision, the vision of your heart. Amen. When the vision of your heart lines up with the vision of God's word, that's when we began to see the manifestation of God's vision First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. It begins to manifest. God's a God of increase. Jesus himself increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. That's God's plan, but it doesn't happen unless you start seeing on the inside what God's saying in his word about you. Not because you're great, but because he's great. And he decided to move into you. In and of ourselves, we're all nothing. But we're not in and of ourselves. Hallelujah. So watch this. The, uh, the word of the Lord, the word came in a vision. Boy, there's a revelation right there. The word came in a vision. The word came in a vision. The word comes to you and I in a vision. Not necessarily having a, a, a vision, but beginning to see on the inside. I'm going to use an example. Some people struggle with praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, receiving it. You know why? Because they just see themselves on the inside as not being able to receive it. Because they've tried before. That'll hinder your reception. You can apply it to any promise. Anything. Because that's what we see. We see ourselves defeated. We see nobody liking us. We see all these things. We see that, you know, what's the use? We see all that. When we start seeing what God... That's why the Bible says He's able to do... It, we let the power work in us exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that's working in us. What's that power? It's seeing the imagination of our heart, seeing the love of God on my behalf. <sighs> this is the key, guys. There's the key of keys, the taproot of keys, all the other tools, praying in the Spirit, man, they all help, but you've got to see it on the inside. The Lord's trying to paint a picture. Yeah. 
on the inside of how he sees you in Christ. After these things, what? The word of the Lord came unto him in a vision. Notice the first thing God says. Freak out. Ah, freak. No, I'm kidding. Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield. Those are called fleshbacks, by the way. <laughs> I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Get your focus on me, Abram. And Abram said, watch this, said, Lord, what will thou do? What will, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus? Next verse. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Next verse. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that, is, that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. Next verse. And he brought him uh, uh, forth abroad and said, Look! 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 Why do we need to be in the Word of God? So we can see. Amen. Not a bunch of rules that God's going to smack you down because you're not measuring up, but to see what Jesus has made available. Everything you see about Jesus is true about you if you're born again. Yeah. Oh, my word. That's blasphemy. No, that's scriptural. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. That's what it means to see in the spirit. We think seeing in the spirit is goofy, spooky. Oh... Uh, uh oh, Reggie. <laughs> That's what we think it is. It's not. You tell what I watch. <laughs> I thought you were into the word. <laughs> and he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if you're able to number them. That's pretty awesome. The stars. Can you, you ever try to number the stars? You can't even see them all. All the ones you can see, you can't number. There's too many. Watch this. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Your, his seed was going to be in, a, in accordance with God's promise, and it was based upon what he's seen. The Bible says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. you got to believe this. If you don't believe, and how do you believe it? You see it on the inside. That's why if you never unplug from this world... God loves you. It's not about the love of God for you. But you're foolish because if you never unplug from this world and plug into God's word by seeing on the inside, you're never going to say it correctly. You'll say something because you got a Charles Capps uh, confession book, but it won't mean anything. It'll be vain repetition. But if you start seeing it, then you'll say it, and then you'll see it. Watch this. If you're able to number them, and he said, so shall thy seed be. Next verse. Uh, and, and he believed in the Lord. You know what he did? He said yes to seeing it on the inside the way God was showing it to him on the outside. That's what it means. Okay, Lord, you're right. And as long as I agree with you, I'll be right. Amen? And he believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now look at Genesis 22, 17. Genesis 22, 17. That in blessing, speaking to Abraham, I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee as, the, as thy seed as the stars of heaven, we read that in Genesis 15, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Notice he said, stars, how many know that deals with nighttime? Sand on the seashore deals with the daytime. God wanted Abraham to see it day and night. Listen, this is the promise I have for you. This is the promise. You can't even number this. You can't even number this. And, well, that's Abraham, Chris. That's a Bible guy. Listen, you got a lot more than Abraham had. The, Abraham had righteousness on credit. You got it in actuality. Amen. Who do you think you are, Patty? <laughs> I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of God. Humble yourself and say that. That's what God says about me because I'm in Christ. He's in me. He lives in me. That Christ might finally settle down and feel completely at home in my heart. How does he do that? When I begin to see what he sees about me. Okay. Back to, back to your thing. Number two. God desires us to see. The word is loaded with pictures. Look at this one. John 14, 9. This will rock your world. Watch this. God wanted you to see him. Jesus saith unto him, Philip, have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Whoa! And how sayest thou then, 
show us the Father. If you've seen Him, you've seen the Father. And when you and I see Jesus in the Word, we see the Father. But guess what else we see? We see ourselves because we're in Him. Mm. That's not blasphemy. That's new covenant. That's identifying with Him. That's what identification is all about. In my flesh, I'm nothing. But in Him, he, that's where I can do all things through Christ, not through Chris who strengthens me. All right. Moving right along. Our walk is based upon... Our walk is based upon what we are seeing. John 5, 19. Let's look at this. Our walk is based upon what we are seeing. This is why, people, this is why the church as a whole, we're being outdone by our culture. You know why? Because culture is creating images. Everywhere you go, you see images. I mean, I get, I get this thing on my phone, it comes up. I mean, advertisements on my phone, it's coming some girl. I think, what is this all about? Where's this coming from? Some of you got that. <laughs> Others are going, what do you say? <laughs> but the, I'm st this, is, this is our culture. It's bombarding us with images. We need to get God's image on the inside. Amen. See, the reason people succumb to sin many times is because they don't see themselves as a new creation. They don't see that they have power over sin. They don't see that, that I don't have to go that way. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm not on my own. Christ is in me the hope of glory. You got to see that on the inside. God will help you. You know the Holy Spirit's called the helper, not the doer? Just thought I'd throw that out. All right. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. Jesus is saying that. <laughs> but what he sees the Father do. What he sees the Father do. That's what he does. Watch this. For what things soever he doeth the, son, or the Father, these also the Son does likewise. Glory to God. Huh. Our walk is based upon what we are seeing. Example, modern culture has, is bombarding us with images that are causing what they are seeing in our culture, what we're seeing in our culture to trump what we are hearing at church. Wow. What we're seeing in our culture is trumping or overriding what we're seeing in church, we're hearing in church. Yeah. But it, I love what Aaron, Aaron brought forth. About how you got you to grab it, you got to meditate it. You get, but what he's saying is you got to begin to see it. God will help you. The Holy Ghost will help you see it. Do you see yourself in the promise or the problem? <laughs> this is good news. Watch this. Huh. So, uh, Proverbs 29, 18. Most of you have heard this verse. Without a vision. What does vision have to do with what sense? We're talking about internal vision, vision of the heart. Without, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law or the standard of God, happy is he. How do you do that? This isn't talking about keeping the law for righteousness. This is talking, the Bible, one translation says they cast off restraint. If you don't see it on the inside, you'll cast off restraint. This is what people do a lot of times when they hear grace. They don't hear grace, they hear rebellion to law. I'm not under the law. I can do anything I want. No, you're, you're under grace though. If you're under grace, you're empowered. Yeah. Hallelujah. A person will not walk where they cannot see. Will not I got uppercase there. It's on, uh, number three. A person will not walk where they cannot see. Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You're not going to walk where you're not seeing. I don't care how great a message was. I don't care how much it stirred you up. I don't care how much hallelujah and, and, and waving a hanky or whatever you do. I don't care what it did. If it doesn't create a vision, it won't change your life. But, if you, but see, this, this is where you've got to grab hold and say, you know what, that really spoke to me. I'm taking that into my prayer closet and I'm going to make it mine. I'm going to make it mine. Lord, you're going to show me that. See, we see ourselves getting depressed. We see ourselves, uh, well, it's just normal. It's just normal. We see, that's what I'm saying. And then people will come up and they'll speak words to you. And then if you let those words create a picture, those negative words, then it'll become a belief of your heart. Then you'll speak it and you'll have what you say. Many uh, example, many of us, 
Let me say this one again. A person will not walk where they cannot see. And I got wow there. If you want to know how to spell it, no, I'm just kidding. Example, many of us see ourselves sick, broke, in bad relationships, etc. Many of us see ourselves that way. Well, that'll never happen to me. You know, it's just this the way it is. It's just never, it'll never happen. You can't be a victor with a victim mentality. And everything about the Lord, we are more than conquerors through Him. Amen. What do you mean? That means there's things to conquer in this world. Look at this one. Proverbs 4. Let's just go there first. Proverbs 4. Your heart is a vision factory. Say that. Say, my heart is a vision factory. Whether you'll have vision intentionally or by default. Do you know that? You're going you're gonna to have a heart vision intentionally or it's, you're automatically going to revert to something negative. Automatically. See, that, let me tell you something. I'll say this again. This isn't something you hear in one message and then that's it. This has just got to be a kit. We, we start a month ago we talked about this or a little over a month. But this has got to be something you've got to start in your life. You've got to practice. It's hard in the natural because I'm so used to being negative. It's easy to be negative. Everybody's negative. Everywhere you go, it's negative. You turn on the news, it's negative. Another killing. 400 million were blown up today. And well, I wonder why I'm depressed. Huh. I can't seem to put the dots together here. But that's why if you're not drawn from God's Word, if you're not seeing vision from God's Word, if you're not seeing the life in God's Word, guess what? All you got is this evidence out here. All you do is gather your evidence from the world. Whew, hallelujah. Now go to Proverbs 4.20. Number four is guard your heart which produces what you see. The blank is heart. My son. I heard one uh, Hebrew expositor say that my son means the builder of the family name. How many know it's God and sons? <laughs> How many know God wants to use you to build the family name? Amen. Let's build the business. Build the family name. Amen? Amen? I think that's cool. My son, attend to my words. You know, you've got to attend to them. If you, if you attend to a garden and you attend to something, that means you take care of it, right? Attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Watch this. Next verse. Let them not depart from all oh, my word. Let them not depart from... My eardrums, my nostrils. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Do you see it? Vision. What are you seeing on the inside? You see victory or you see defeat? I've been telling my wife, we've been talking about this a lot. I see so many people and it's not going to change until they change the vision of their heart. It's like... You know, you try, to, you try to do this and do that, but it's always the same thing because their heart's not changed. Until their heart changes, their circumstances aren't going to change. That's why you take two people, and this is true, you take two people that come out of abusive relationships and they're single, you put them in a room packed full of people, the two abusers will find each other. Because their hearts, like hearts, attract. They attract. See, this is life and death. Belief is not a thing of your head. It's a thing of your heart that affects your head and affects your mouth. We believe in a heart, then we speak. Therefore we speak. Speaking may help you sow seeds to your heart, but just saying it does not mean you're seeing it in your heart. Guard your heart which produces... The, let, let, them not, let His words not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Next verse. For they are life unto those, those that stumble upon them. Those that it comes on them automatically whether they're involved or not. They are life only to those who find them. God's word is life only to you who find it. And how do you find it? You get it in your heart. You begin to see it in your heart. Those are the only ones that receive the life that's in God's word. How many know a lot of Christians live defeated lives? If it was just because I said I'm born again, I said yes to Jesus, then it should be an automatic thing, correct? It's not. Though his words, they're only life to those who find them. And you've got to see it, and you've got to keep it and guard it in your heart. And their health, look at this. If you find them, then they, they're life to you, but they're health to how much of your flesh? Oh. Except for your bottom ear lobe. Oh. All of it. You know what all means in the Hebrew? Thank you, Peter. Oh, that's right. Next verse. Keep, guard, 
your heart with all diligence guard it guard what you're seeing on the inside with all diligence guard it guard it <laughs> you know what that means guard it <laughs> told my son Joel he's dealing with a teacher who believes in open borders and I said just ask him if he locks his doors at night and if so why open borders man you shouldn't lock your doors it's getting political better stop <laughs> keep your heart guard your heart with all diligence why for out of it flow the issues of life now watch this watch this out of it are the issues of life that word issues means boundaries boundaries who determines the boundaries God or us no we do God's limitless we determine the issues or the boundaries of our life based on what we allow we're seeing on the inside you know it's it's difficult I mean when I say I'm I marvel that I'm still alive <laughs> I do sometimes I mean I know me talk it beat down I mean I used to think if I spoke negative of myself that was humility I, I talk about a mess but guess what you know I'm really rejoicing in this I'm finding out every human being is a mess and God takes messes and makes messages out of them. And if I'll begin to see in line with Jesus, who is perfection, and bring every thought captive to His obedience, not mine, all of a sudden, He'll manifest the excellency of the glory is of God and not of Chris. Glory to God. God delights in choosing, using messes for messages. All you got to do is start lining yourself up with who Christ is and not who you are. Because who you are is who He is if you're born again in Him. You're, I'm not saying you're Jesus. Don't, don't freak out on me. But I'm saying you're one spirit with Him if you're born again. Amen. Glory to God. How would Jesus... You know, I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, you know, uh, just... I, well, I, don't, I can't. You see, I look at me. When you look at you, you limit you. When you look at Him, you become un unchained, unlimited. God wants to use me to change the world. Amen. Come on. Yes. Now you say that about you. Yes. Say, God wants to use me. I can't believe for you. You can't believe for me. Now whatever that is, whatever degree or, or, or all as long as I'm in His perfect will. God's plans for you are so much better than your plans for yourself. But what happens is we continue to identify with ourselves. Even our revelation. We think, well, I don't have enough revelation. <laughs> we start thinking it's based on what we know. It's based on who He is. That's, it. That's the revelation you want to go with. If you're born again, God sees you in perfection, not in imperfection. Amen. Amen. One, two amens. Amen. You know when you say amen, you're saying be it unto me. That's how God wants you to think. When you walk in, Christ is in you. The Holy Ghost walks in. Jesus walks in. The Father walks in. They're one. They're in you. Amen. Watch this. Keep, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, the boundaries of life. Next verse. P look at this. Put away from the froward or perverse mouth. You notice he talks about it, your heart, and then he goes to your mouth. See, we, many times we try to change our mouth without changing our heart. Yeah. Somebody hear that? Yeah. Put away from your, and perverse lips put far from you. You change your heart, you'll change your lips. Yeah. I'm going to tell my wife, man, I just get this urge lately it's been really strong to just praise the Lord I was telling Joel the other night I said I don't even want anything I just want to love on him <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with asking I ask but I try to get that out of the way so I can just love on him does anybody hear this you ever been around somebody and, a, and, you, and they're just there because they want something from you like your kids no, I'm kidding. <laughs> not my kids no, except for Grace she's not here no, I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> no, no sir, you know, if we would just love on the Lord. But see, that's a heart condition. The more I know He loves me. See, you will love God the more you know He loves you. It, it, listen, it's automatic. Who would try to tell me, oh, you just need to love God. You need to love God. You need to try harder to love God. We love God because we get a revelation. He first loved us. Amen. And all of a sudden, it's automatic. You can tell your love for God by how much, you're, you're, or your love, the much revelation you have of, of God's love for you by your love for Him. If you find yourself just wanting to praise Him all the time, your heart's getting a revelation that He loves you. Mm. 
Good stuff. Praise God. Now watch this. Guard your heart. Out of it flow the issues, the boundaries of life. One will not doubt something they see, but they can doubt something they hear. If you see it on the inside, you can't doubt it. But if you don't see it on the inside, you can doubt something. Oh, that's just Chris. You know how he is. Don't comment. <laughs> Example. A distance runner does not doubt when he or she can see the finish line. You can hear about the finish line, but if you don't see the finish line, <sighs> where is it? I don't think it exists. <laughs> remember in high school, we had a cross-country coach, or one, the one from Versailles. I remember he would, he would try to psych us all out. So yeah, you guys run, you take off, you run down here, you run down to that tree down there. Not that one, the one way down there. You know, trying to clancy. <laughs> all right, he's gone now. But you know, did it work? Probably. I don't remember. <laughs> no. All right. A distance runner cannot doubt when, they, when he or she can see the finish line. What you see on the inside is what you are on the outside. And I said that earlier. If you go to Proverbs 23, verses 6 and 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. He's talking about a stingy man who invites you to come over, a miser, and he says, hey, go ahead, eat as much as you want, but his heart's not with you. And as we think, that's, that's our true disposition. The key to faith, fill, uh, the key to faith slash fear-filled words. For example, here's an example. Some people, when they get in, in a tight situation, will say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> How many of you know they're saying the name above all names, correct? How many of you know that the spirit behind what they're saying is, is fear, not faith? Right. right? Somebody manifests a demonic manifestation. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Remember the seven sons of Sceva in the book of Acts? Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? They said, I adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. <laughs> okay. This is this, a uh, fear-filled negative response. Uh, words create pictures. Create goes into that, or paint. You can put paint in there, either one. Hebrews 11.1, because I want to deal with something. I want to bust a bubble here. Hebrews 11.1. What is now faith? Now goes in the thing. How many people have heard, well, there's faith, and then we, we have now faith? You ever heard that? Yeah. How many know that, let me show you what this is really talking about. Does anybody know what the book of Hebrews is talking about? It's talking about Jews that had received the new covenant and were being tempted and, and prodded to go back under the Mosaic law for their right standing with God. And all Hebrews 11.1 1 is saying, in this new covenant, it's now faith. And what is faith? Faith is seeing on the inside the promise that God has made available. He's saying under this new covenant, it's now faith. It's not saying that there's some mystical now faith. Can anybody hear that? He's saying under the new covenant, God operates via faith. And faith sees on the inside the promise and then proclaims on the outside. All right, moving right along. We're just about done. Praise God. I'm excited. Practice. Somebody say practice, put off, slash put on. Practice. Some people say practice makes perfect. I believe practice makes permanent. How I many know if you practice something negative, it's not going to be good? How I many know that we call them bad habits, right? Practice. What your practice is what we... This is why, once again, this isn't going to come by osmosis. This isn't going to come because you heard this message. This isn't going to come automatically. You're going to have to take this truth, get the CD for your love gift of a thousand dollars. I'm kidding. <laughs> Just joking. All right. Uh, you, you know, begin to meditate on this. Begin to make it yours. And begin to practice it. Every day. What do you believe in God for? Are you seeing yourself in that promise? Or are you seeing yourself, well, it's just always going to be like this. We are so used to identifying what we've seen in our physical life that it's difficult to change. To, it's going to take a while to turn this ship. But you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I'm in process. I'm in process. I realize it's wrong for me to think less than what Jesus says of me. It's not because of any merit of my own. It's because I've received him by faith. It's because my faith is in him and not in me. And so I need to begin to say what he says. But I need to see it and then I'll say it. Say it may help me see it. But just because I say it doesn't necessarily mean I'm allowing myself to see it. All right. Practice. Put off. Put on. Look at, look at uh, uh, Ephesians. Chapter 4. Verse 23. Verse 23, 
And then we'll do 22 through 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Isn't that powerful? That word spirit, of, be renewed is, is an ongoing present tense verb. Be constantly renovated in the way you think on the inside. The image you see on the inside. Be constantly renovated. Now back up to verse 22. That you put off concerning the former conduct, the former lifestyle, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Next verse. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, the very depths of the way you think. Be renewed in there. Be renovated there through your imagination, through seeing the promise. Next verse. And put on the new man. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created by God in righteousness and true holiness. When thoughts come at you that are contrary to what God says, say, I reject that thought. I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. And see that thought getting a kick in this backside and sent on its way. Begin to see it with your heart. Begin to see in your heart with the heart you believe into the righteousness that He has made you and made available to you. Not with the head. Now I know this, you're going to have to start using your God-given imagination. It'll change you. Would you put on, so put off when they come. Watch this, I wrote down here. Practice until these things become habitual. Practice we form our habits, then our habits form us. That's why the Bible says, through use we have our senses trained to discern good and evil. Hebrews 5, 14. Conclusion. Everybody say conclusion. conclusion. Now see the message. I ain't kidding. <laughs> conclusion. God's mind for you is Jesus. Not you. He loves you so much. His mind for you is Jesus. My word. Yes. That'll put a shout in a corpse. Yes. God's mind for you is Jesus. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians 1, 6. You're accepted in the beloved. Literally, highly favored. Highly favored, not favored, highly favored. That's how God sees you. He sees you as a son. Not as a religious servant, but as a son or a daughter. Glory to God. My word. God's mind for you is Jesus. For who you are in Christ is who Christ is in you. Colossians 1.27 <laughs> Seeing on the inside is the essence of trusting God and true Christian growth. God, God sees you blessed, which means equipped for success. Let me share this that I shared uh, Thursday night. You know why people are messed up in this world? Because their identity's messed up. Do you know why Christians are messed up? Their identity's messed up. They're not identifying with Christ. They're identifying with themselves or with what other people said about them or with all these things. They're not identifying with Him. That's what it means when it says we die to self. We stop identifying with who we are and start identifying with who He is. <laughs> Amen. Let me give you four things here uh, that... And these are in order. Identity. Once we, we're, we get established in our identity, then we begin to understand our authority. Yeah. Right. See, a lot of people are trying to get authority without going to their identity. Mm -hmm. Identity, then authority, then blessing. What's blessing? It means equipped for success. Yeah. And then purpose or calling or destiny. But if your identity's messed up, you're never going to reach your destiny. If the taproot is identity. And how do we identify? We begin to see ourselves in Christ on the inside. We begin to use our God-given imaginations to form or throttle or squeeze the way we believe into what He says. Here's what I wrote down. Identity is what we are seeing on the inside. And ident or it's identifying with your heart. A messed up identity will result in ab an abuse of authority. That forefoots blessing and ultimately hijacks one's purpose. I'll say it again. A messed up identity will result in an abuse of authority that forfeits, forfeits blessing and ultimately hijacks one's purpose. Amen? It all starts with where, what we're seeing on the inside. What, do I see myself in Christ? Or do I see myself like I've always seen myself? Strong, muscular, athletic. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't really believe that, <laughs> okay? Seriously. We begin, we begin to identify with Christ. 
See, God has a purpose for us. But most people are trying to figure out our purpose without ever understanding our identity. And then we don't understand our identity, we don't understand our authority. We don't understand our identity and our authority, we don't walk in blessing. We're not equipped God's way for success. We may be equipped the world's way for success, but not God's way. And ultimately, we forfeit our purpose, our destiny, our calling. But it starts with identity and it starts with what you're seeing on the inside. God loves you. Amen. He really does. And we see that, but do you see that? Listen, I... I None of us are there. You understand? In fact, one more. Can I do one more quick? First, first uh, uh, Corinthians 13, verse 12. And then we'll be done. We really will. I think it's 1 Corinthians 13, 12. If not, we'll do verse 11. Yes. For now, this is saying, now in this present world, we see through a glass or a mirror darkly. But then face to face. In other words, when I'm out of this body, I'm in my glorified body, I stand before the Lord, then I'll see Him face to face. No longer, you know, dimly through a, through a glass or through a mirror. Now, somebody say now. I know in part. I don't know the full scope of us. None of us do. Watch this. It says, but then, somebody say then. Shall I know, even as also I'm known. And the Lord showed me something. He said, the more that I know now, even as I'm known, the more that I realize how God sees me, now I'm growing. There will come a day when there will be no more veil of this mortal flesh. But in the meantime, the more I know, the more I see. Look at that. For now we see. Somebody say see. See. Can you see it again? Can you see? Can you see? See again? The more we see, that's growth. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand. We're done.